Happy Fragrant Friday, Fraghead. Hey everybody, this has been here at That Cologne Guy coming at you with a new... Ooh, Jakarta, Indonesia got it this week. Review! How are you doing? Happy Fragrant Friday to you. I hope you are doing well, and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, first and foremost, let me say, since last Friday, we have had yet again a tsunami worth of new subscribers, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you smash, and I mean smash, uh, that subscribe button, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, of course, and forward this content on to your fellow frag heads. I have new content every single Friday. I enjoy what I do and I have lots of different types of episodes, but this episode will be a typical uh, review, uh, a traditional review of one fragrance. Uh, I know a lot of reviewers are getting away from that. I personally couldn't love it more. So uh, before I dive in on the notes, etc., etc., uh, let me say again, Yet again, uh, this was a bottle sent in by subscriber Brian. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Brian has sent in a few bottles. And by the way, stick around or go to the chapter, but I prefer if you just stick around for the entire ride. Um, and at the end, for the bonus feature, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, all the ones he sent in and I'm give, give some coveted awards. So uh, stick around for that. So uh, subscriber Brian sent this in. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate that. This is Karloff, uh, Korloff, actually. Uh, it's actually an O, so I find myself saying Karloff, but it's Korloff uh, Popelum by uh, the house Korloff in Berry, and this is the first time uh, that I am uh, sampling or trying a fragrance from this house. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the bottle and the box, of course, and the design, and uh, and then we'll get into nomenclature. So first and foremost, you can see it comes in this box, and uh, if you notice here, you pick it up here, so be careful if you get it, because uh, when, when you first get it, when I took it out of the package, I originally kind of lifted it like this, and then it, it it's, it's very easy. In fact, this is actually my, my second take, and if you guys want, if you guys are the OnlyFans type, you know, and you sign up through me you can let me know and i can send you take one you know i, I would do that for you so this is actually take two uh, of this episode uh, just because i dropped it uh, the first time it's very easy to do so be careful so uh, the box originally so it's got on the bottom it's got a stand so one one thing right now let me say quickly is on inside the top of the box it, it, I don't. It has no adhesive at all. But I'm not even. So maybe it's not supposed to stay. But it fits on top. But it, as soon as I took it out of the box, it it fell right out. So um, a little cheap uh, in that sense. Uh, on top of it's got the the K for Korloff, looking nice there. And then it has this stand, which quite frankly, you could, you know, you could just keep if you wanted to display. One thing that really strikes me, and, and he can let us know in comments, Brian seems to he 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 does an outstanding job of 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 liking and buying fragrances that look really, really nice. And so uh, no real minimalism here either. And uh, this is quite nice. And I like I like the fact that it comes in a, a stand. So, you know, if you don't have a ton of fragrances or you do but you only keep a couple out this would be yet again uh, another fragrance that you could do and keep and put out and keep it on this little stand and so uh, that's what i did this week i actually really like that i do like the cap i will say this though um if you notice here see that right there that that it's it's in fact i can even watch watch Okay, J just barely scratching it is going to have it flake off even more. So, um, not not a big fan of that. I also thought that was a little a little cheap, uh, starting to come off already. And I I mean I keep it in my bathroom on the counter. It doesn't move. Uh, I don't carry it around. Uh, it hasn't you know it hasn't traveled. Uh, there's no reason for it to chip like that. Um, if I'm going to be a little grumpy again, I would also say the atomizer is uh, cheap. I don't know if I can get it to pop, but it moves around uh, too much. And watch. 
yeah, I don't think you can pick that up, but it makes kind of a clicking sound and it just it just generally moves around and feels a little cheap. Like it, it feels like it's going to break before I get to the end of the bottle. Uh, don't know that it will. Hope it doesn't. But um, uh, I didn't really care for the atomizer as far as the quality. Now, as far as what it emits, it's quite good. So here I'll give you a spray. So very, very good on what it emits. Uh, just just a little a little cheap uh, there in terms of quality. So uh, that said, though, I think that's where the bad news ends. Uh, I really really like the bottle. You can see here in suboptimal lighting, it still looks really really nice. Uh, the theme here, of course, uh, I will reveal in a little bit, but this is a wink wink, um, a black bottle. And, and with 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 gold print, so I really like uh, the way it looks. It has a it has an austere uh, confidence about it that I really do like. So some good and some not so good. On the bottom you have uh, par for course, what you would expect, and then you have including the batch code. And I'm sorry yet again, uh, this is um, I could not find a batch code checker online that has Korloff uh, registered with it yet. One said coming soon, but I do have the batch code number. And that is 9214335, and here it is. So that's the batch code. 9214335. This is a 2019 uh, Woody Spicy, and this one is uh, uh, three. Uh, this is another three ounce fragrance. So remember last week, I had the. Baldessarini Ambre. And remember, that was the first one I ever had that was th uh, three ounces exactly, and it was a 90 milliliter. Uh, mm -hmm. So this one is an 88 milliliter. Again, wink, wink. And I'll tell you why that matters in just a little bit. So this is another first, right? Last week was 90 milliliter. This is 88 milliliter, but they're calling it, of course, uh, just three ounces on the dot either way. Uh, so that's kind of cool that it has an odd uh, size to it. And again, I really like the uh, austere nature of the bottle. Uh, you know, some flaws on it, definitely, but overall quite good. I would recommend, you know, just keeping it in its little stand. I like that. Uh, but either way, I'm, I will be keeping the box because um, I learned from you guys that most of you indeed do keep your boxes. So when it comes to the notes, let me just say, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that check out on for granted to get the, the, the base notes, you know, some amber uh, and some leather and, and two other ones. Uh, and I have to tell you, the reason why I'm, I'm being general on that is, is I really, for me, this is all about the top and the mid. I, I don't pick up too much of the base notes, and that's why I'm not going to include them on the notes that I picked up. Because, yes, I saw them, but here's what's really going on for me. When you get a blast, uh, and I'm in the initial blast, uh, you get... Um, uh, let me, a cypress bomb, shall we say. This one has a ton of cypress uh, and apple in the beginning. And I mean, it really uh, takes over your senses. Uh, and then in the mid, you really get uh, a, a, another blast of violet. So uh, to me, this is all about apple, violet, and cypress. And then, you know, of the four down in the bass notes, I could possibly pick up vetiver. I can't really say that I'm picking up the leather, uh, the amber, and yeah, there was one more uh, as well, but uh, perhaps vetiver in, in the base notes. I could probably say that I could, I could, I could tease out a, a little bit, but for me, this is all about the top notes and how they blend with the mid notes. I actually find this to be a quite linear fragrance. I, I don't know that it really... Uh, with with one exception, actually. Let me let me hold that thought for a second. It's it's to me it's a linear fragrance after about the first forty five minutes to an hour. And, okay, so so those are the notes. Now, so here a couple things to consider. In the first half hour, to me, this one when you talk, see Cypress. If th this is. I mean, these are synthetic notes, all right? No, no one is out, uh, you know, chopping down trees and, and rowing uh, off the shore of, of shores of Sardinia uh, to get these notes. It is quite synthetic, uh, and when you have cyp when you have apple, and especially for me, when you have an, uh, a synthetic cypress, 
What can happen with that is you, you do get a little, uh, and the bluebirds could come out, you do get a little bit of a, uh, a cheap uh, quality to it. And so it, it does have a feeling in the first 30 minutes, all right, hold on, hold on. In the first 30 minutes, you do get kind of a, uh, a, a type of fragrance you would associate with like the the sick the teenager crowd um, it does have kind of a cheap uh, you know drugstore designer braces first driver's license prom high school graduation it you know first fragrance middle school uh almost dare i say axe do i want to say that uh, but it does have that kind of quality in, in it just just in the beginning hold on so then after that here's what's really odd about this and i i I think it's it, I think it's synthetic violet mixing with either vetiver or or, or leather. I, I'm I'm not sure, but that's my best attempt. There, somebody else mentioned this too in Fragrantica, by the way. But but it's clear there is there is a a slight fish market smell to this, as odd as that sounds. Now another one that comes up is Aqua de Jo Ascenza. People always say that it sounds you know smells like a the Helsinki fish market. Uh, so ex excuse me to the to the Finns out there. Who by the way, congratulations, just won their first gold in ice hockey uh, and much well deserved uh, for Suomi. So uh, I was there of course uh, to, in Helsinki at the fish market and I absolutely loved it. So uh, it 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 does. It it does smell like a fish market. I don't think ascent. When people say ascenza by the, by Aqua de Jo, uh, I don't understand what they're saying. I did pick up, by the way, this. Here's what I think is happening. I think it's kind of a synthetic violet mixing with perhaps the leather or the uh, vetiver. Best I can come up with. All I can tell you is th there is there is that element. Do I think it lasts all throughout the fragrance? I do not, but I, it is present for a little while. So the first hour, I must say, was was a thumbs down. I'm getting axe. I feel like I'm getting my braces taken off. Um, you know, I feel like I'm about ready to get my driver's license, uh, and uh, I'm you know I'm wearing too much axe. Uh, but then th then after that, I feel like I'm, I'm back at the uh, Helsinki fish mar market, which of course brings back great memories. But you get my point for fragrance. I don't know if that's where you want to be. First hour, I'm going to say th th uh, thumbs down. Then after that, though, actually it picks really uh, nice. It picks up, and from hour from like the 61st minute we'll say until the you know to write out the duration of the of the fragrance i really liked it so i you know i it, it, there's kind of a, a downer in the beginning so i think this would be perfect for somebody if you are going on a date or if you wear this to work and commute the, if as long as you're okay with the the first 45 minutes to an hour you know if you're getting ready if you're on the metro if you're uh, driving to pick up uh, your date uh, w whatever uh, i think you'd be fine because once this settles down i like it a lot and then after the first hour i really can't say that it that it um that it uh De develops it, it that's what i mean by it when i say it's quite linear from uh the first hour on so so that that's that's this fragrance as far as the notes and the smell i do i do like cypress a lot but it is kind of like lavender with me uh, it is a slippery slope uh there is definitely the uh the high school element to some Cy cypress uh, fragrances and uh, this one this one dances dangerously dangerously close um, but then after the first hour it gets away from that so that's cool i overall i like it i like violet um it it, it, it certainly has a prominent uh, violet note um it's it's not a fragrance for everyone and it's not an everyday uh fragrance it's not an everyday wear that said it is it is quite nice uh overall i like the scent in fact if i just if i just gave uh this i would give it a four out of five just on scent alone uh j just on the actual smell it's it's pleasant um it, it it does have a little bit of like i said kind of the 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 aerosol deodorant um element uh, to it so again it's not going to be uh, for everyone and it is synthetic no one's rowing off the shores of sardinia to get these notes but um 
it is what it proverbially is so it is nice so um that those are the notes and that's what it generally generally smells like so let's get and we talked a lot about with the bottle the design and the box uh, so let's get down of course to nomenclature anytime you're dealing with a european house you are going to have so much fun and this one does not disappoint my friends uh, first and foremost don't be like me and say karloff because uh, it is Korloff and uh, so this is a house from Paris and it was founded in 1978 I've got my notes here uh, and well actually the house I don't know but it the, the it originally started off as a jewelry house and that was founded in 1978 so I want to be clear about that by Daniel but it looks like Daniel it's Daniel is Daniel in French Daniel Paillesur and uh, P-A-I-L-L-A-S S A R Palacer, Palacer. I'll put that. I'll put the spelling. Daniel Palacer. How's that? So, uh, and, and and guess guess what? He named the jewelry store, jewelry house. Excuse me. After the after Korloff. And what is Korloff? Korloff is the largest black diamond in the world. And when you hear black diamond, you think, correct, you better think, kiss. So comment if you have nothing else to say. Let me know your favorite kiss song. And if you have, if you don't have any favorite kiss songs at all and don't like the band, go ahead and unsubscribe. All right. So thank you very much. Anyway, black diamond. I will put the link up to the kiss song. Uh, come on. And it's black diamond. We have to do that. So if nothing else, you associate this review with Black Diamond by Kiss. Korloff is the name of the largest black diamond in the world, and it is how many how many carrot how many carrots? What's what's that? Yep. It is eighty-eight carrots, which is why there are eighty-eight milliliters of juice in the bottle. Uh-huh. A theme. A theme, and I like that. So the house is based on on the name Korloff and uh, of course which is the nickname or name for the 88 carat black diamond largest diamond in the world and it is it was originally owned and perhaps still is I'm not sure by a man named Korloff Sapoynikov Korloff Sapoynikov I'm assuming Russian don't know that but I'm assuming uh, Russian and uh, so, so that's that. That's the story behind the house, and that's the story behind the name. So, in terms of nomenclature, lots of lots to say, and lots of winking going on in odes uh, back to and, and homages back to the largest black diamond in the world, um, and that's why it's 88 milliliters. That's cool. I really like that. That's why it, the bottle is black. Uh huh. That's right. And that's why you are going to go check out KISS after watching this video. All right. So uh, this is an EDP. This is an Eau de Parfum. And I think I mentioned it, but it is a 2019 Woody Spice. So I really like the touch. Uh, I really like the house. I like the connection. I like what they're doing here in terms of, um, of paying homage uh, to, uh, to the diamond. Great job on that. All right. So let's get to projection, longevity, and sillage. I... Uh, this is another one for me that I, I really, especially for an EDP, by the way, this really functions on my skin as an EDT. I'll, I'll just say it right there. So for me, this is another one of those uh, four to six hour fragrances, perhaps closer to six. Um, on, on my, I have uh, one day a week where I have a super, super long day. And uh, yet again, uh, I had to uh, go home in the middle and uh, reapply. So it's it, it's not going to give you an, an, an eight hour work shift. And it's also, that means if you wear it from four o'clock on. So if you're going to hit the happy hour and then go out all night, um, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to make it uh, to midnight so this is a four to six hour closer to six but i didn't get one minute uh, over the six uh, hour mark uh first so the first hour does quite well in terms of of, of projection but i remember I, I actually don't like it in the first hour um, so i'm going to say it projects reasonably well for the first for two to four hours uh, and then it and then after that it starts to get to the to close to the skin so this is another one you want to put on your hair um or 
and or uh, uh, clothes uh, besides your skin, uh, you can overspray uh, with this one. So, you know, I was a little disappointed with the longevity, especially for an EDP. Come on, guys. I mean, uh, this functions more like an EDT, almost like a body spray, to be honest. And then the projection, as I said, was, uh, you know, quite good for the first four and then it really starts to dissipate in fact uh, i'm not going to tell you what it is but i got in the mail a couple of days ago the fragrance that i will be reviewing next week and uh, i put just to give you an idea uh, this was middle of the day i've been wearing this about uh so let's see eight about five five hours i put i put one spray of the new one won't say the name you'll have to tune in next week and all the entire rest of the day, all I could smell was that one, and I could not smell any of this at all. Now you can make an argument. Well, that's because you know you you just got it in the mail. You had never smelled that one before, and that's how you know olfactory systems work. Um, I had never smelled this one either, right? And I've only been wearing it for this week uh, to do this review. So. Uh, would have liked a little bit more. Siage, if you're coming in and out of rooms at parties, uh, same thing. You're going to get about eh, two, two and a half. You, you might grab a compliment or two on this one. Um, but I think this one is more along the lines of... See, here, here, here's what I think about when I think of this one. I think this is something you would want to purchase if you're considering. And I'm not saying it's 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 the same thing as what I've said before. Not a clone, not a dupe, not a copy. But it is similar... It is in the similar vein as uh, GIT. So that would be green Irish, Irish twe tweed. For some reason, that's always hard for me. Green Irish tweed by Creed. That, that's a tongue twister. Green Irish tweed by Creed. I'm a poet and didn't know it. So GIT, it's what it's called, um, and thank God it is. Uh, if if you have never tried that and you don't want to delve into niche, that's the one that supposedly uh, Clint Eastwood wore that, uh, and uh, uh, was it Humphrey Bogart? There was an, another famous actor who wore uh, GIT among others, um, uh, and I I had a sound I liked it, but you, you guys know if you watch the channel, creeds don't last on my skin. But I mean, it, it, it smells quite nice. This is something you might want to try just to kind of test the waters a little bit and if you if you absolutely love this fragrance then you could step up to something like uh green irish tweed uh it it is it is otherworldly i i love the freshness of that one and again i'm not saying at all that they're they're this is a copy because it is not but uh I, I think this would be great for someone who was, you know, thinking about grabbing something like that, which is going to be, you know, retail three to four hundred dollars a bottle. Um, and you know, I I just can't pull off the creeds. I they, they smell great, but it, uh, fleeting. I'm just not going to pay, you know, three to four hundred dollars for something that's going to last like two to four hours. I, I'm I'm not going to do it. All right, so so that would be the the target audience would be someone who first of all likes um, if you like violet, especially added combined with the uh, cypress and or apple. So I mentioned uh, this is another apple based fragrance like the Ambre by Baldessarini last week. So uh, this does have a prominent apple note. So you could add that to your collection. Uh, cypress is uh, is is good in this one. Could have been better, but it's still it's good. And then you know a lot of people really like violet as a note and the fact that it's a mid note here is something that is will be appealing to a lot of people and then the second person would be you know if you're thinking about moving on to higher ground with git you absolutely could if you are thrilled uh, with this one when it comes to age uh, i'm gonna say see in the first hour i'd almost say you know 16 and up i think in practice what you're gonna have with something like this is 35 and up so age, I'm going to set it as 35 and up. I, I, I think I just think that once once the violet takes over, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be um, for the the 35 and up crowd. Gender actually will be a 90-10. This is a perum and this is a perum, uh, meaning uh, this isn't a marketing. Uh, I do see this as as as, as ultra masculine, and I think for people who who own it, and I always make this distinction. So forgive me for repeating, but it's just because what I want to do is some people say, "Oh yeah, I, I have that one," but I I don't want to include people who if they were given it, they traded for it or. 
if they got it as a gift, they didn't really seek it out, right? So I'm talking about people who who own it, who have it as their signature scent, who bought it, who wanted it, um, and not were they weren't randomly given it uh, given it as a gift. So for those people, I would say this is probably a 90-10 split. 90% will be men and 10% will be women. I do find this as a uh, a masculine, clearly masculine scent, and I, w- I would not like this actually on a woman's uh, skin. So 35 and up, 90% the bros. When it comes to, uh, if, uh, let's do season. Actually, this is a new, this is another easy one. Uh, this one, of course, is when it's 100 degrees July. <laughs> no, kidding. This one is another one that is winter, fall. This will be a fall, winter uh, fragrance. And, and, and just like actually the Ambre from last week, I don't see this as a 365-day um, a year uh, fragrance. I see this more as seasonal. Uh, or with one event, and I'll get to that in just a second. But it's, in terms of seasons, this is clearly a fall, winter, and uh, of all days to wear. Yet we are yet again uh, in a snowstorm. So uh, March first cannot come fast enough. So perfect time to wear it. Uh, actually, uh, for once, I'm reviewing something, and it's the perfect time of the year to to wear it. Event. Uh, this one is not a work scent uh, for me. Uh, this one could be. It, it, especially because it doesn't project a ton. If you commute anyway after the first hour, then you could expect to give some compliments. I think if you were in a small room, though, uh, in, a, in, a, in a, a boardroom, a meeting room, I'd be a little careful here because when you're talking when you're talking violet mixed with apple and and cypress, uh, this isn't this isn't a fragrance for everyone. Uh, this isn't a crowd pleaser. Uh, it has personality too. So you know, just that's, that's why though I wouldn't wear it to an office. Some people. Uh, if they don't like fragrances anyway, I don't want to pick them up. I, I can see this being off-putting to certain people. Certainly, I am not one of them. I do like it, but I do see it as one you want to be careful with during the day. Uh, this one is a nighttime fragrance for me. I don't really see it as full-on romantic. In fact, I am so amped uh, about the 88 milliliter and black diamond uh, nod that um, all I can think about is uh, Kiss who I've seen three times live, and as well you you should uh, see them live before they retire. And I like how they're you know, you know going to retire. End of the road uh, tour has gone on for like you know seventeen years. But anyway, uh, I, I you know I was thinking I would wear something like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold. I am gonna keep this in my. Uh, collection and i'm going to reserve this for this is going to be my my rock concert so this is when i'm i'm rocking black leather it's actually got my my, the, my leather jacket of course it's got leather in it anyway uh so that'll go perfect but this is going to be my when i'm seeing uh, checking out my rock and metal concerts uh and which as soon as the pandemic is over uh, better uh, start damn soon so this will be reserved for um, my my concerts and that'll be something that i look forward to uh and that's great that's going to be uh, the perfect addition uh for uh my concert going experiences so that so that's the season we've got age we've got event and all that's left to do really is give it the rating. Uh, you guys know I have a five spray rating system, and this one is going to be a three. This is a three out of five for me, um, and I'll tell you why. As I mentioned in the beginning, in terms of just smell alone, I would give it a four. Just smell. That said, it, it's it's not incredibly versatile. Doesn't pretend to be. Uh, it's it is highly original. It doesn't smell exactly like any other fragrance that I mean, it's it's similar to others, but I do give it uh, props. It is original. And I like that about this fragrance. Uh, It it isn't it isn't for every day. um, And it's not incredibly romantic. It's not I wouldn't call it sexy. And I also wouldn't use it for the office. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to dock a point there for the versatility. So I'm also going to dock a point um, because again, the uh, you know, th- this this they should they should invest more uh, for things like this, right? The 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 flimsiness, the 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 cheap element. I mean, come on, yeah, don't don't do that. All right. So uh, because of that, and then I'll add on. And if you disagree, by the way, if you think, oh, come on, you know, come on, a little scratch, get a life. All right. All right. My argument would be that fine. I won't dock a point for that, but I will dock one because for an EDP, you need to be giving me a work shift 
and oh so much more. So because I didn't get a work shift, I will dock uh, one spray for that. How's that? So that's three out of five. You guys know the three, some I move on, some I keep. I will be keeping this one, and I, as I said, I'm reserving it for the next time I hear Black Diamond live. All right, so don't forget to check out in the description, of course, uh, <laughs> uh, Black Diamond by Kiss, and let me know do you like this? Have you had this before? What do you think about this? Have you tried anything from the Korloff house? Uh, okay, if you don't like that, do you, uh, what is your scent of the day? I always like to know that. And finally, what is your favorite uh, Kiss song? Because everyone... Okay, don't tell me you don't like I Want to Rock and Roll All Night and Party Every Day. Come on, come on. You secretly have sung it in the shower. So don't don't tell me you don't like any Kiss songs, all right? So there you go. Three out of five. I'm going to go uh, one on each uh, side of the wrist. And for the second week in a row, mere coincidence, I'm rocking Spotting. And we'll put it right on the emblem to give them better luck uh, than they've had lately. Boom. And aha. Uh -huh. So there you have it, folks. Another review by the boards. I have really, really enjoyed these. This one, all of the subscriber Brian collection here. Uh, stay tuned for the bonus feature because I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And always remember, my friends, fragrance marks the celebration of today. Take care, everybody. Okay, so welcome to the bonus feature. I'd like to quickly talk a little bit about the fragrances here that subscriber Brian has sent in, and then I'm going to give out my coveted TCG Olympic medals for the ones that he has sent. I've really enjoyed reviewing all these over the last uh, three months. It's been incredible. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I wanted to end this uh, this run that we've had with giving out some medals, uh, especially in honor of Finland, who won the gold medal in ice hockey. I'm so happy that they finally got that done. All right, so he, he has sent in, and I, and I went ahead and made a list, and then I also have uh, the ratings that I originally gave. So um, this is not an order. Order that I reviewed, but I just I made a quick list here. So one is uh, Ambre by Balde Sarini, and I have here, and that was a three out of five. The next one was number one Oud by Aigla, uh, and that was a four out of five right here. After that, I have Ferre Black um, by Ferre. Uh, and that was a fun one to do. And that one was a four out of five. You might remember if you watched the channel, that was the Come From Behind Victory one. That was kind of a three, and then it really started to take off, and I like that about that fragrance. Uh, then we get into uh, Jaipur, which is uh, the EDT. So remember, it's Jaipur or Jaipur, however you want to say it, uh, f followed by the EDP that I reviewed. And I think actually I did the EDP first. Um, anyway, uh, so and then I have Bentley Momentum Unlimited, which I sent to uh, my uncle, uh, and that was a three out of five. So the the Jaipur EDT, this one was a five out of five. This one was the EDP was a four out of five. The one I sent him was a three out of five. And then I have Ford Mustang Performance, which is uh, which practically everyone, including the puppy down here, uh, uses. Uh, and that one has just monster longevity. My God, that it, that that stays on. If you if you spray this and then uh, wear on a hoodie and wear it the next day, you will still smell it. Longevity is outstanding. Ford Mustang Performance, three out of five. That's the one that's kind of like the Lamal, uh, close to a Lamal clone, uh, we will say. Uh, but I really, I really like that one, especially the longevity. And then uh, finally, the Korloff, the one I reviewed uh, in this episode here, and that was a three out of five. When it comes to metals, though, I have to say I, I really, really like this one a lot. But I have to say, for my actual metals themselves, this one it was a three out of five. But you know what? It 
I really like the longevity and, and the the overall smell of, of both of them, but I think because the longevity is just a little bit better, I'm going to give this one as my honorable mention. So uh, let's look at the uh, bronze medal. So the bronze medal uh, must be, uh, and I can hear the sound of people uh, unclicking, uh, unsubscribing right now, uh, is uh, Jaipur. Uh, EDP. I know you guys like the EDP more. Remember, this the one that has more powder in it. Uh, I gave that a four out of five. I like it. I don't like it as much as you do. I, you know, I, I don't like the powder element to it that much, and so that's why I will still get. It's still got a medal. Come on, uh, bronze medal for that one. And then the silver medal is going to be uh, number one. Uh, Aigna really appreciate this one, and and and. Number one oud, uh, and as I mentioned uh, last week, I just find myself reaching for this one. Right? Sometimes it's not about particular notes or anything else. Is like I just kind of find myself over the last two weeks. Uh, I just keep reaching for it. I've got compliments. I remember I had a friend of mine actually asked me for for the name and wanted to, where can I where he can get it, and so that speaks for itself. And it's certainly deserving of a silver medal. So finally, the gold medal. Uh, you're wondering, and you know, drum roll, please. And it has to be none other than Jaipur EDT. So I love the EDT. Really like that one. That was a 5 out of 5 for me. Uh, and Jaipur Porom, uh, which is 5 out of 5 sprays, really like that one. And I almost, I almost said home. <laughs> uh, Jaipur Om, <laughs> homey, poor homey. Uh, and uh, we're going to go this for the gold Metal. So, kind of a come from. Me.